To celebrate the 50th anniversary of pickleball, we go back in time to the birth of the modern paddle and hear from Arlen and Steve Peranto how the first composite paddle revolutionized the game. iHeart Pickleball is powered by Highlands Leg Cramps, proud supporter of pickleball players everywhere. My name is Steve Peranto. I started playing pickleball in 1974 at Green River Community College. They were playing in uh, PE classes and intramural classes, and me and a bunch of the tennis buddies decided, hey, this looks fun. We're tennis players. We, I think we'll be pretty good at this, so we took it up. All we had were wooden paddles, and uh, we didn't know any better and still had a lot of fun playing the game. My dad always supported me in everything I did. He followed me when I played tennis matches or whatever activity I got into, so he would come to watch me play pickleball tournaments. Well, I learned pickleball from my son, from Steve. He built a pickleball ball court in his first house and uh, we thought it was kind of a foolish thing to do you know my mom and dad didn't think that was you know to tear up your entire backyard at this new house and you're putting in this cement thing in your backyard but after we played pickleball a couple of times we really liked it so then I built a pickleball court at my place on Lake Ohop we'd be playing at nighttime and nobody in the lake had television so they'd be out watching us play at nighttime you know that their only entertainment my mom and dad both got hooked into pickleball right from then my dad was an engineer for Boeing. He was really good at inventing things for Boeing, making things cheaper. And so his mind always worked that way. I was an industrial engineer, a manager of industrial engineering at the time, but I just liked to come up with new ideas and new things. I, I just, because Steve was into pickleball and I liked the game of pickleball, I, we played a couple of tournaments, all wooden paddles and everything. And We had intramural tournaments with the wooden paddles. My partner and I, we got tired of losing to the same people over and over. We just couldn't break through and win a tournament. I was complaining to my dad about, you know, the paddles are too heavy, the ratio's way wrong. I weighed my tennis racket, it was seven times heavier than a ball. And I weighed the pickleball paddle and it was 13 times heavier than the ball. So I knew the ratio was wrong. So I was just complaining to my dad about that. You know, you look at the tennis rackets, they're real lightweight and, and responsive. And uh, so I thought it's gotta be something lighter than wood. I was familiar with the, uh, the floor panels that Boeing made for all the jets. And when I found out that they had uh, they surplused a lot of their floor panels, so I thought, well, give it a try. And I cut out some using carbide cutters like Boeing did. About two weeks later, he comes to visit and throws two paddles on the floor. And it's the original two composite paddles. I had no idea he was gonna, he had been making these prototypes. He never even told me. I think he wanted to surprise me. I just look at him and think, okay, well, let's go. My backyard was a pickleball court at that time, too. We got first hit. The sound it made was totally different. The feel was different. I could feel it come off faster. and it, Oh, it's like a light bulb going off. Right away, we went, man, this is really something. You know, it was really responsive and, and more accurate than the wooden ones and just lightweight and better to play with. My second partner, who was a high school buddy, Richard Skevington, about a week later, Richard and I go to the next tournament playing the same people and we win it. My name is Randy. Well, I've known the Peranto family for a little over 30 years. I've been part of the process in which Arlen, Steve's dad, has developed the, the first prototype paddle uh, that wasn't plywood. The way Boeing made their floor panels, they'd make the floor panels, they'd cut them out, and then they would route the, the edge of the floor panel about a oh, quarter of an inch inside, and they would fill it with, with a putty that they had made. And that's how I made my first paddle was I routed out that edge and I filled them with with the putty. Okay, the first paddle was this one here, This the, the very first composite paddle, and it turned out so well that uh, we started making higher quantities and whatnot. Then the second paddle was an improved version. You see, I have the edge guard here, I've got the, the end caps here, and they got a new logo here. Then later, we decided that tennis rackets are getting bigger and better, so we came up with a magnum, and this gives you a bigger sweet spot and a lot better hitting area than the other ones. Now just about all the paddles now are this size or larger. Everything was always scrap material, Boeing leftovers. Today's paddles, the reason they're expensive, that material is very expensive brand new. Dad was buying it pennies to the pound. And I would go down there and I'd buy them for like 50 cents a pound for four by eight foot sheet of composite material. And I started making paddles and I made them in my shop at home. I think he had 20 steps in making one paddle picking up the material, driving it home, cutting them all out, silk screening, put the end caps on, the extrusions for the edge guards, the grips. It was like a 20-step process, and we do one step at a time, just assembly line, just like you would any other manufacturing, but in our garage. When we first started playing with the composite paddles, we were the only ones. 
and now we were winning tournaments with them. We did have an advantage over the other players, so finally we were winning some tournaments. They probably thought, hey, these guys weren't winning before, now they're winning. It was just so fun to be the first ones to use those paddles and do so well. And then, of course, all our friends are asking, you know, can we have one of those? Everybody used my paddles, won the tournaments, and pretty soon everybody wanted to use my paddles, so that's how it became really popular. Gradually, our friends are buying paddles from us or we're probably giving the first paddles out. When we first started using uh, Steve's dad's pickleball paddles, the play really picked up. You can move the paddles a lot faster and you have a lot more action off of them and more consistency on the edges of the paddles with these new ones versus the old ones. So it's changed the game and making it more of a, a real quick response game. It's really nice to see somebody that's really has changed the game and every new paddle company since then, they've copied him. And that's a pretty nice uh, reflection on his accomplishment of the new paddle. I don't think he was thinking about a company. I really don't. I think he just went, I'm gonna help my son Steve win some pickleball tournaments. And then I think the light switched on about, hey, you know, maybe, maybe we have an idea here that other people would be interested in. I decided to call him ProLite to signify a lightweight paddle. What started out is just my dad trying to help my partner and I win some pickleball tournaments transitioned into uh, us developing a pickleball company at ProLife. I took him to all the tournaments. I had one guy that was selling for me. He'd, he'd give me, I'd sell him my 20 paddles. And he'd sell them to his friends, just to, not for making any money, but just to distribute the paddles to, to people playing pickleball. Every tournament incrementally we went to had more players using composite paddles. When I started playing, all the paddles were heavy, wooden. Uh, when I started playing tournaments, I noticed everybody was playing with non-wooden paddles. Me being reluctant to switch over, I was one of the last ones to switch over, and uh, Steve Prana actually uh, said, hey, uh, why don't you try this, and I, I became hooked. At first we were so excited to count, hey, there's six of our paddles, there's eight of our paddles, now there's ten. Pretty soon it was, oh, now there's only ten wood paddles. Now there's only, oh, look, Earl is still using a wood paddle. And once they were used by tournament players, that was the proof of the pudding. When you get competitive people doing a sport, they're gonna to try to think how to get the edge on the other people. And the edge was, this is a lighter, more responsive, bigger sweet spot paddle. With, with this paddle, the way the game changed in two ways. Senior citizens and children could play it more easily because the paddle was lighter in their hands. A lot of seniors have switched because of how light and easy it is to play the game. The ball's light, the paddle's light. But now also, the great athletes can move their hands so quick with this that it's become a fantastic athletic sport where, I mean, people are just demonstrating tremendous athleticism with this kind of paddle because they can do more with the ball. Well, just like any other sport, pickleball has evolved, and it's still evolving. The, the paddles are still improving. I've always been kind of an inventive type person. I've come up with lots of inventions and things. I've got several patents on different things. You know, just part of my makeup, I guess. I like to make new things and try things out. Well, I was just complaining to my dad about the weight of the paddle, and he comes up with these composite paddles. To my surprise, I had no idea he was working on this, and he comes over and throws these paddles on the ground. And again, that we just love those paddles. It just changed, it changed the sport a lot. No matter where you are, pickleball can bring us together to celebrate community, learn new things, and have fun. If you know someone we should feature on a future episode, we would love to hear from you. All you have to do is send us an email and tell us your idea. This episode of I Heart Pickleball has been brought to you by Highlands Leg Cramps, America's number one over-the-counter leg cramp medicine. For more information, go to highlands.com. <laughs>